Today we're going to talk about the do's and don'ts of making your own potting soil. See, making your own potting soil is actually way cheaper than going and go buy a $9 bag from Lowe's or Home Depot. And on top of that, there's a few things you need to know before you go stick your plant into some soil because it could be the difference in the plant doing well or not living. In the years that I've been growing my own food, I have found that this is a complete waste. So the first don't when actually trying to make your own potting soil is don't go buy this perlite bag. See, perlite is really used to improve drainage on your potting mixes, and that's really about it. Now, it also says it has plant food, but I don't really know if it does or don't. But even if it has plant food, there's a lot better and cheaper option than just that, and you get a lot more bang for your buck. So my first do when you're making your own potting soil is buy pine bark mulch. And you get two cubic feet of pine bark mulch compared to eight quarts of perlite. So it's a slam dunk if you're trying to save money. Pine bark mulch is a lot cheaper option than perlite. And it also does the same exact things. It provides the aeration for your potting mix. And it also has nutrients inside the pine bark mulch that break down over time. And another reason why I don't prefer using perlite in our potting soil mixture is because of this. See, perlite is really, really fine and really, really light. So literally what happens is, is all of those pellets of perlite go from inside the soil to floating all the way to the top the more you water your plant. So to me, it's like wasting some hard-earned money. Another must-do when you're trying to make your own potting soil is make sure you add black cow to it. I always use one-half parts black cow to one-half parts peat moss. And one of these bags of peat moss costs about $15, depending on what store you go to. And one of these bags of black cow costs you about 5 or $6. And when you mix the two up, it comes out to being a lot cheaper than buying a $9 bag of miracle Growth. So now that you heard some of the do's and don'ts when making your own potting mix, I want to show you which potting mix mixture actually works best for certain plants. See, one half parts peat moss and one half parts black cow works perfectly fine when you're trying to grow certain plants, especially for flowers and certain types of vegetables. So if you're trying to grow some fruit trees or some raspberries or blackberries or pomegranates or figs or a lot of other fruit bearing plants, this is the soil mixture you need to use. Yes, I know I left a few off, but you get the gist. Pretty much any fruit bearing plant, this is what you use. Equal parts peat moss to black cow to pine bark mulch is your best option in order to grow your own fruit bearing plants. That's one third, one third, and one third, all mixed up. Use that in any fruit trees. Again, anything that grows fruit is perfect for that. And this is what your soil mixture should look like, especially when you're trying to grow your own fruit trees or any fruit bearing plants. So to sum up this video, Here's what you need to know. You can see I've got pine bark mulch in my fruit bearing plants. This is a blueberry bush and it's perfect and it's a must have when mixing your own soil to keep the pH levels and the acidity levels to where they need to be. So make sure you use equal parts peat moss to black cow to pine bark mulch when you're trying to grow your own fruit. But if you're trying to grow vegetables and tomatoes and stuff like that, then really and truly you can get by with peat moss and black cow.